Good morning, everyone, and thank you for being with us for worship this morning. This, of course, is a recorded service. It's not a, a live stream. Right now, there are no uh, in-person services in the church, but we're getting closer. In fact, um, we're making some plans uh, that you'll be hearing about fairly soon uh, in terms of some in-person services that will be taking place. I hope that you'll please join us for coffee hour following the service today. And you can just go to trinityzoom.org. It'll take you right to the coffee hour. And then I hope that you'll uh, stick around for the forum that's following that. And today the forum is about the Summer Savoyards, the local Gilbert and Sullivan group that's been rehearsing here at Trinity. And our guest will be Jim Micah, who will talk about the history of the Summer Savoyards. And finally, on behalf of myself, the wardens in the vestry, I want to thank you for continuing support of the church financially. It really does make such a difference. Uh, when we're not meeting in person because of COVID. And also, if you have any issues during the week, please feel free to call the church office, uh, leave a message with Arlene or Jeff, um, or you can leave a message for me. You can send us an email because uh, we are working. The building may be closed, but the body of Christ is most certainly alive and well and functioning. Thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil. But with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin. And alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death. By a man has also come the resurrection of the dead. Or as in Adam all die. So also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia.
The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by, by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the first letter of John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this, we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this, we know that he abides in us, 
by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. is from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How many of you saw the picture of Queen Elizabeth when she was sitting alone in the choir pew following the funeral of her husband, Prince Philip? everybody see that picture this uh, past week or so? It really struck me. And I was thinking it struck me because it's such a powerful symbol that it doesn't matter if you're a pauper or wealthy or the lowliest minion or a queen of a country, that in the end, the reality of death levels out the playing field. And it reminds us that ultimately we're all human beings. We all remember the words of Ash Wednesday. Remember that you were dust and to dust you shall return. And at some point, we all experience just what the queen experienced, sitting alone and dealing with the unique pain of loss that only we can feel inside. Our pain is unique because no one else knew the person in the same way that we did. Yet at the same time, our experience of pain is such a powerful connector with other human beings on earth who have experienced the same thing. One picture really does sometimes say a thousand words. And I think that's the wonder of visual arts. 
It's a language of transcendence. It can be a painting, it can be a stained glass window, it can be a photograph, or it can be words on a page that take us back to a place that we have been or give us a new perspective on reality, the language of transcendence. The words or even the tunes of songs can be a language of transcendence. How many people cry when they hear a particular hymn play? Maybe it's Amazing Grace or Ave Maria. For some, it's Eagle's Wings or His Eyes on the Sparrow. I mean, for me, for all the saints, is my favorite. St. Patrick's Breastplate's another, and Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Hey, I'm a priest. What can I say? There are a lot of hymns that move me. What is that hymn that takes you back to a specific time, a specific place? It may be a wonderful place, a song that you remember as our song when you fell in love. Or it may be a painful place sitting in a pew at a funeral. Either way, it's a place that we touch eternity. We experience a time beyond time itself. We experience transcendence. And what is Easter all about? Well, of course, Easter is all about transcendence. Two of the primary symbols that we use for Jesus in the church were actually inspired by our gospel reading this morning. And those two symbols speak the language of transcendence. One symbol is Jesus as the good shepherd. The other symbol is Jesus, the lamb of God, who take us away the sin of the world. Was Jesus a shepherd or was he a lamb? <laughs> well, of course, he was both, wasn't he? Vance Gilbert once wrote a song about that that I even sang, I think, at a sermon some years ago. Am I sheep or am I shepherd? Let me know. <laughs> you know. Of course, the answer is yes. He was both of those things as we are too. In John's gospel this morning, we then hear Jesus say, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the father knows me and I know the father. Now to know someone is to transcend the surface acquaintance. Now we may have many casual friends and acquaintances, but to really know somebody goes far beyond that. It's to share something on a much deeper level. So Jesus goes on to talk about how deep this knowing can go, how deep this love can grow. To quote Jesus from another place in John's gospel, there's no greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And then the gospel of John continues today. I lay down my life for the sheep, and I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. Now, the reason Jesus' voice is so memorable and notable is that he spoke the language of transcendence. And there we're talking about that word, transcendence again. So whether it was when he met Nicodemus and told him that he had to be born from above, or whether he mourned over the rich young man who couldn't follow him because he had to stay put and take care of the responsibilities of all his wealth, the words Jesus spoke and the life he lived was the language of transcendence that went beyond just one community, one way of saying it, one way of experiencing it. That's why you have other people, you see, that join in together as one flock. John's gospel then continues, for this reason, the father loves me because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. You see, Jesus is making a free choice to serve his father and all of us by giving everything, even his physical life. Jesus taught through his words and his life that service itself is a common language of transcendence. I'm sure you remember back on Monday Thursday as Jesus washed his disciples' feet at the Last Supper. He commanded them that they had to learn to be a servant like he was a servant. The reason the Father loves the Son, Jesus says, is because the Son willingly lays down his life in service to others, you see? 
And that's what the first epistle of John is talking about this morning. When it says, we know love by this, that he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Boy, that's striking at home, isn't it? Serving another person transcends so many of the walls that separate us from each other and separate us from God. Serving one another opens doors to calling another person our friend. Now, I've heard from many people that when you serve another person, you often become the one who feels more blessed by the experience than the person you're serving. Yet, I don't think you could ever convince the one being served that they weren't the recipient of a greater blessing. But Jesus is teaching an example by his life choices transcend cultures, it transcends race, it transcends all the things that humans invent to separate themselves from one another. And the Easter season is all about discovering the transcendent experiences that are around every single corner. Places where we can hear Jesus's voice and not just remember his words in his life, but actually experience those words in life today. Those lessons that he taught us about living and loving, about knowing, about serving. It's, a, it's as basic as giving a thirsty cu- person a cup of cold water, isn't it? Or even sitting in a pew remembering your husband when you're the queen of England. In the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now say the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Loving Father, light of our minds and souls, we thank you for sending Jesus to live among us to make the way of the cross the way of life. And we praise you for sending the Holy Spirit to strengthen us, comfort us, and guide us into all truth. Holy Trinity, one God, let our praises come to you for your love and goodness. We give thanks to you, O God. We pray for your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, that you would guard its unity and preserve it in peace, especially in areas where your church suffers violence because they bear the name of Christ. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, and Didi, our bishop, for Glenn, our priest, and for all lay ministers of Trinity Parish, that you would inspire and lead us all for your love and goodness. 
we give thanks to you, O God. For our people of our world and of our nation, that you would still in all people the desire for peace and mutual respect, that you would enlighten us to appreciate and care for this earth, our island home. For your love and goodness, we give thanks to you, O God. We pray for those who struggle in poverty, for those who endure chronic pain, and for those who suffer from addictions in its many forms. We pray for those who live in fear of abuse. We pray for those who are ill, especially Jan, Austin, Sally, Tina, Kathy, Dana, Susan, Kristen, Johanna, John, Helen, Joe, Craig, Mary, Marsha, Danielle, Brenda, Linda, Ida, Anusha, Rudy, Bill, John, Sharon, Nancy, Suzanne, Larry, Betsy, Robert, Andrew and Mary, Virginia, Nancy, Barbara, Marco, Jessica, Suzanne and Emily, Wes, Michelle, Sean and Patricia. Are there others? Please share your prayers silently or aloud. We pray that they may know your healing power and peace. For your love and goodness, we give thanks to you, O God. We thank you for the lives of those who are celebrating birthdays, especially Barbara, Cynthia, Brenda, Jan, and Lynn. Are there others? Please share your prayers silently or aloud. For your love and goodness, we give thanks to you, O God. For the communion of saints who have gone before us, especially Paul Ives, who recently died, and George Marlin and Cora Geiger Hasbrook, George Frederick Hasbrook from the Altar Flower Memorial List. Are there others? Please share your prayers silently or aloud. Let us hear their voice of encouragement as we run the race of faith that is set before us. For your love and goodness, we give thanks to you, O God. Lord, you have called us to serve you. Grant that we may walk in your presence, your love in our hearts, your truth in our minds, your strength in our wills. Until at the end of our journey, we may know the joy of our homecoming and the welcome of your embrace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power because you have created all things and by your will they were created and have their being.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Thank you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Open our eyes and ears, O Father, that we may always become more aware of your spirit moving in the world. Heal us of the blindness of racism and the inequities which exist in our society. Motivate us to act in faithfulness as citizens under the reign of God, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. All this we ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty and most merciful God, we pray today for those in our world who have been impacted by the COVID-19 virus. We pray for the sick as well as for those who treat patients with COVID. We pray that you would give wisdom to those or in charge of distributing vaccines, that it may be done with equity. We pray also for all who struggle mentally or financially during this pandemic. Show us all how we may be agents of your compassion and love and inspire us to act with integrity and courage, following the example of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. And please join with me as we say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for the immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace, and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service 
and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And now let us say together a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, let us go forth in the power of the resurrection. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace and believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.